under the sea. Life will be better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Yeah. Hello, friends. Welcome back to my car. And the uh, face of someone whose um, face has decided that makeup is not a thing right now. And we are on our way to an estate sale. Safety, of course, always have the masks, always staying as far away from people as possible. But this one was just a little too good to pass up. Yes, the audio is crap. I apologize. It will get better later on. All right, let's do this thing. But never leave home without coffee. To begin our endeavor, we started in the garage. Being shown a wall full of Nerf guns, I looked to my left and discovered the most glorious, rusted out singer, possibly industrial machine that I've seen, ever. Spoiler alert, I did not get it. It was $50, yes, however, I have no room for it, and endeavoring to fix up sewing machines isn't really high on my bucket list as of yet. So sadly, she stayed there. And then we went inside. Now in my experience, there are two kind of estate sales. There are the estate sales that basically just sort of want it gone, so they're going to price it accordingly. And there are those that go to eBay and try to charge full eBay or Etsy prices in person. This was the latter. So we did see lots of fun old games that were all way overpriced. There was some books, there was some toys, there was some old camera gear. There was lots there, and had I gone back on half off day, I probably would have purchased a whole lot more. But I am reminded of my house full of things that I still haven't listed, so I opted not to. After passing through the kitchen, we went back into a little cupboard area, and there was a shelf full of trinket wall hangings, which I sort of glanced over at first and then realized, what is this? These are left in fish. Yes, you are going to come with me. And after a quick perusal of the rest of the rooms, including this very vintage bathroom, we headed back to the car with our finds. as I don't want to torture you with this terrible sound quality, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump over to a future version of me to show you what I got. Well folks, it's been a few days and I've had a little bit of time to do some research into these left and fish situation. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. Now the most important thing for Left and Fish is to realize that not all Left and pieces are created the same. I got lucky in that these pieces are some of the higher value pieces. And sometimes you can find pieces that are overvalued, like there was a set of white fish there that I left behind that weren't even really worth what the price tag had listed. So you really have to be careful when you're trying to acquire Left and. Now there are a couple issues here. The blue fish has a very light crack that's a starburst shape along the backside. While it doesn't transfer to the front, that does damage the actual value. And unfortunately, I didn't realize until I got home that there are supposed to be pink and blue bubbles that go along with these. The bubbles. Darn you! Why were there no bubbles? Oh well. That being said though, I still went ahead and took all the photos and have them listed on my Etsy and on eBay in case anyone wants to come buy them from me. And of course the other major find from that is going to be the... This bad boy, which I paid a whole whopping $30 for, which is amazing. So we're gonna make sure we take a really good long tour through this lovely 
Ladies Home Journal Collection from 1894 to 1895. Now, unfortunately, the binding is falling apart, so I'm going to have to be very, very careful with this. However, thankfully, it was sturdy enough to go ahead and protect all the magazines inside, which really, at the end of the day, is the most important part. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into this now, shall we? If there's ever been a time to not judge a book by its cover, it is this case. As you can see, it is completely torn apart. But thankfully, it contains all the issues from 1894 through 1895 safely. So I can't complain. One of my favorite things about it is the illustrations. They are just amazing to show off the fashions of the time. I primarily picked this up because it is a fantastic reference for embroidery patterns of the time as well as some fashion transitions from month to month over the two year period. In this image you see the evening costume of black and gold And here, an image of Toilette of Mousseline, of which I am sure I have butchered the name. Truly one of the reasons that I picked this up is because I am holding in my hand something that has been on this planet for over 125 years. And there is just something about that level of history in my hand that is priceless to me. At this point, I enjoy the images even so much as to say, I'm not sure I'm going to sell it yet. It may stay with me for some time until I find ways to archive all the imagery and items that I want from it. Because nothing is as entertaining as finding things such as hints on home dressmaking. Take dresses such as you would have prepared for late spring in Boston using light woolens in a stranger climate in preference to any cotton fabrics. That and the terrifying small child next to it. But also, I would like one of these please, and thank you. The thing that I enjoy most about this collection is that it is actually complete. So you're getting a full scope from 1894 all the way to 1895, and you're going to see the whole transition through that time period, as if you were living through it in the moment. <coughs> and dusty. <coughs> dusty. Well, folks, I hope you did enjoy this tour of the finds that I have. If you have some left in pieces yourself, click that like button. Or if you have some ladies home journals, click that like button. Or if you just in generally liked the video, click the like button. Being sure to hit subscribe so you can come back and see future hauls and other fun tidbits that I find. And turning on the bell for post notifications so that YouTube might actually tell you when I post things. Thanks so much for watching folks. See y'all next time. Why do today what you can wait about a week and a half and do under pressure. Did I want to say anything? No, I just want to do voiceovers. Do in the voiceovers. Ah. Should I do a stupid little intro with those like that? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that's going to happen. Hair in my mouth. Not helpful. Thanks so much for watching, folks. See y'all next time. Damn it. Not helpful. Anytime now. I'll wait.